And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongues shall consume away in their mouth. If I were to tell you that God is on Israel's side, I could expect an army of Christians to march into battle against this message. Democrats, Republicans, Tories, Independents, and every flavor of left-wing, right-wing, and centralist Christians of every nation. However, all of you are most welcome to make comments below and discuss it. Almighty God is always right, and what he is doing in Israel today is always right. Israel is an extremely secular and sinful nation with legalized abortions, homosexual marriages, homosexual beaches, and a very high drug and crime rate. Many of the Orthodox Jews in Israel hate everything that is not Orthodox Judaism, especially the Lord Jesus Christ and Christians. They will soon embrace and accept a false messiah, an antichrist. When the Lord Jesus Christ returns, he's coming with an army. Why? The Lord Jesus Christ himself is returning to destroy the wicked of all nations from this planet and then rule this planet in peace for a thousand years. Is God on Israel's side? That's an absolute yes. Almighty God's word and promises to Israel will be fulfilled in God's own timing. We can each have our wonderful time in revival and then we can each march down the hill for or against Israel and fire our religious guns at each other. Or we can come to terms with our intellectual arrogance and ask ourselves, just what is Almighty God doing? I want to be on God's side in these matters, regardless of popular religious opinion. Can we each be on God's side when He destroys Israel? Can we each be on God's side when He destroys our own homes? Can we be on God's side when the economy falls and there's no electrical power, gas, or water available? When famine, the disease, and war, and poverty reach each one of us? And then death. If you examine the prophecies, you will see that soon, Daniel's 70th week, a time of judgment is coming upon the nation of Israel and the whole world. Roughly 2,000 years ago, the Apostle Peter preached a sermon on the day of Pentecost, saying that the prophecy of Joel 2.28 had been fulfilled. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. There have been several prophets listed in the New Testament, plus those Christians manifesting the gifts of prophecy. Almighty God is an intentionally invisible God, and occasionally He speaks to man through His prophets. He has spoken through a donkey, through thunder, through angels and men, and in these last days He's sending so many signs and wonders and fulfilled prophecies that there is no excuse for mankind to ignore His warnings. And just as the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to Saul on the way to Damascus, we hear testimonies of the Lord Jesus Christ Himself manifesting before Buddhist, Hindu, Muslim, and other religious leaders a personal evangelism by the Lord Jesus Christ. This manifestation creates a dynamic change in that leader, and usually Christian revivals in those religions follow. One of these religious leaders that had a Jesus moment was the highly respected Orthodox Jewish rabbi, Kadori. There's been an explosion of videos on YouTube about Kadori seeing the Messiah and the prophecy about the return of the Messiah after the death of Ariel Sharon. If you just search YouTube for the words Ariel Sharon Prophecy, there will be over 30,000 results. Before his death, Kadori said that he expected the Jewish Messiah to arrive soon and that he had met him a year earlier. Before he died at 108 years old, he left a handwritten note to his followers. They were instructed to only open the note after Rabbi Kadori had been dead for one year. After the time period was passed, the note was opened by his followers and was translated as, 
He will raise the people and confirm that his word and law are standing, which by acronym suggests the name Yeshua, a Hebrew version of Joshua or Jesus. Well, we all know that the mark of a true prophet is that all his prophecies have been fulfilled. And we know by default, Ariel Sharon has died and the Messiah will be revealed to Israel soon. The prophecy could have easily been an educated guess. That will be fulfilled. However, unless you and I discuss a much earlier prophecy of Rabbi Kadori, this Orthodox Jewish rabbi, Rabbi Kadori, was famous for fulfilled prophecies, for healing in his ministry, for knowledge of the Word of God, for his wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in the Scriptures. He has many followers in Israel and around the world in his Orthodox sect. On September the 24th, 2001, he made a prophecy that the Gog and Magog War would commence on the seventh day of the Feast of Tabernacles and last for seven years. Well, just a few days later, on the seventh day of the Feast of Tabernacles, October the 7th, 2001, the USA began attacking the Al-Qaeda terrorists. Well, a lot of the Orthodox Jews jumped to the conclusion that this was it. This was the Gog and Magog War. So they kind of took the issue and made it fit the prophecy, which is 12 plus years later, the U.S. is still fighting the war with Al-Qaeda. So that was obviously not correct. We either see that he was wrong in his prophecy or they were wrong to jump to conclusions that this was the manifestation of the prophecy. And the seventh day of the Feast of Tabernacles could begin the Gog and Magog War according to his prophecy. I'm not trying to make the facts fit the prophecy. It's the other way around. If you look at the prophecy and you look at the facts, the facts are that Israel is about to attack. They've committed to attack Iran's nuclear weapons program. They've got to do it. It's self-defense. If they wait until the Feast of Tabernacles to do it, I'd be totally shocked. But they just might. And on the seventh day of the Feast of Tabernacles, the Gog and Magog War begins. It means that Russia will be involved. So at any time between now and then, Israel could attack Iran's nuclear weapons program. Iran retaliates. The whole Middle East goes into crisis until Russia comes in as leadership. That's Gog and Magog and takes those nations that are listed in Ezekiel 38 and 39 and makes their attack on Israel. Gog and Magog war could begin on the seventh day of the Feast of Tabernacles of 2015, which is also right after a blood red moon. The blood red moon of 2015 is on the Feast of Tabernacles, beginning of the Feast of Tabernacles. Seven days later, bam, there is the Gog and Magog War. Now, the blood red moons mean bad news for Israel. The four of them together, bang, 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 bang. It's always bad news for Israel. Remember the verses in Joel that were read. The moon will be red as blood and the sun black as sackcloth. We have solar eclipse. We have lunar eclipses and so on. Now, at the end of the Gog and Magog War, the Lord sends an earthquake and shakes the entire planet and shakes the mountains to the ground and the buildings fall down and all these things happen. Fire on Russia, destruction in the Middle East and so on. But at the end of that war, Israel has seven years of peace. And those seven years of peace, they rebuild the temple that Ezekiel saw in Ezekiel's chapter 41 through 48. And the sacrifices begin again. And the Holy Spirit comes in and takes residence in the temple and so on. But during this seven years, it will actually be Daniel's 70th week. This will be a manifestation of the prophecy of Daniel. It looks like this is the time when the actual Antichrist will arise in Europe and he will take his position and do the ten horns and the three horns and the one horn and so on. All these things are manifested. Plus the 200 million Chinese soldiers will be coming down. So at the end of this thing will be the battle of Armageddon, the return of the Lord Jesus Christ in power with his angels, and quite possibly the celebrate the first jubilee year in several thousand years. Okay, speculation. And I would not dare give you a date on when the Lord Jesus Christ is coming. However, please put your comments on the bottom of this page and let's discuss it. These are the end times. No matter how you look at it, if you're on God's side, you're agreeing with what God is doing. Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famines, and pestilences, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken.
And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. And he spake to them a parable. Behold the fig tree and all the trees. When they now shoot forth, ye see and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh at hand. So likewise ye, when ye see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Verily I say unto you, This generation shall not pass away, till all be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting, and drunkenness, and cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore, and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. The instructions the Lord Jesus Christ gave us is that we should pray that we are able to stand before the Son of Man. My friend, no one is able to stand before the Son of Man unless he is washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. There are none righteous, no, not one. We have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Let us pray now together and ask Almighty God to forgive our sin and wash us in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just follow after me in prayer, but pray with your own faith and your own sincerity. Father God, that's right, just pray in faith after me. Father God, I ask you now to forgive all of my sin and wash me in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and make me holy unto you. Baptize me now in the Holy Spirit and give me more power to resist temptations. I acknowledge that the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay for my sin and is soon to return. I forgive all of those people that I have resented or hated and I receive from you the free gift of salvation. I dedicate my life and commit my spirit to you I ask you now to keep me strong in the time of testing and help me to stand before the Son of Man. I receive that as done. Amen. Thank you for praying with me, child of God. The angels in heaven are rejoicing at each person that repents and gets saved. Please continue and visit my channel for other videos on what does it mean you must be born again about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, about end time prophecies, and many other things that you might be interested in. And help me, if you will, spread the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ by sending this video to your Facebook or Twitter account. If you'd like, you can also copy the link above and paste it as a comment on your Facebook account. I'm looking forward to the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll see you in heaven, child of God. I'm looking forward to seeing you. God bless you.